Hi, this is John. To recap, so far we've implemented multiplayer, we've implemented a basic unit infantry, as well as the auto spawning of that unit, and uh, we also looked into height mapping and uh, setting up the map. So now let's go into, let's make a building called headquarters. And we're going to give it a model and adjust the scale. Uh, so this model is located in the arts folder of Desert RTS pack. And then, oops. We're going to set the scale to uh, 202020 20, or whatever you, uh, you desire. And uh, just to make it a little, little bigger. And we're going to add the basic components. So if you remember, LS Agent is the basic component. It's like game object in uh, Lockstep Framework. So everything just uses that, is based on that. And we're going to set the collider to be a circle. Increase the radius a bit just to make it match. And we're also going to add a dynamic blocker. Uh, all this does is it'll look at the collider and uh, make sure units pathfind around it. And we're going to add a health script so that it can actually be killed. I'm going to change this to something ridiculous like a thousand. All right. So now let's create a script to actually spawn units with this headquarters building. Go to the main folder, scripts, and so we're going to create a script called Bonin's Unit Spawner, and uh, let me reset this project. So we'll just call it Building Unit Spawner. It's a spawner uh, that's used by buildings. It's a building that spawns units. And if you remember before, uh, well, let's just use lockstep namespace and then get this into our namespace. So remember before, abilities are the the like model behaviors for uh, lockstep, and they have a bunch of overridable functions like initialize and simulate that we're going to be using. And these functions they they let you run things uh, on the simulation. So we're going to have a few variables. Or Let's just use public variables for simplicity. We're going to have a long called spawn interval. And we're going to add the fixed number attribute, which makes it so it's stored as a lawn. And uh, actually, we could test it out right now. So if we add bony unit spawner, it'd be easier to show it than explain it. As soon as my spaghetti laptop compiles this, so spawn interval, if you set it to like the number 3.25, uh, for example. And we go into debug view. It's actually saved as uh, this big lawn number in 64. And the reason why, um, well, it's just whatever resolution the math library is using in uh, the fixed math library. So we're also going to have uh, data code. Uh, access the agents section of the database. We're going to call it <coughs> spawn agent code. And this is just going to be the code we're using to spawn the agent. Uh, we're also going to have a function, or so let's, we can just get started. Um, let's create a, a fixed number called um, spawn count or accumulator. And every single frame, we're going to add lockstep manager dot delta time. So every step of the simulation, uh, delta time is the number of seconds that uh, passes between each frame, or from frame to frame. So uh, this is basically saying, this is just keeping a record of time. And uh, we're going to check if it's more than equal to the spawn interval that we defined. And if it is, we're going to 
make this go all the way back to zero to reset it. And we're also gonna call function called spawn unit. And now we have to define it. So void spawn unit. Let's see. Uh, if you remember before, agents are, or abilities are attached to agents. Agents fall under agent controllers and you can spawn more agents with agent controllers. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna access uh, this agents because this is ability, um, you can call this property agent dot controller dot create agent. We have the spawn code. Uh, we have the position, which is, we're just gonna spawn on our position. Later we can implement something like rally points or spawn points, but for now, we're just gonna have it spawn directly on and physics will uh, resolve the rest. So we're going to uh, spawn it on agent dot. And it's just the LS body that's attached to the agent. Also very self descriptive. Okay. So now uh, we're going to have to, of course, so this is another unit. We have to register it in the database and we have to create a prefab so that lockstep framework can keep track of it and pull it if needed. So we're going to go to main units and just drag it in create an entry in the agents section of the database. Call it headquarters, attach or link the prefab. And then we're actually gonna be a little lazy here and just leave it in the scene. And we're gonna test out the uh, default saver item. Um, and all it does is it saves any, any agent you leave in the scene, it'll save and then inject it in deterministically. So it'll serialize a position uh, and uh, some of the attributes that can be saved about this headquarters so that it can not exactly be spawned but uh, or initialized deterministically. So we'll just hit scan and save in the environment helper to activate this. And as you can see, headquarters has been saved with the position it's on. All right, so now we can run it. And well, first let's set the data code. Oh, we actually, uh, let's see. This is a very dirt moment. I'll make sure that the data code is a string or it won't run or it won't, it won't even show up in the inspector, it won't compile. So let's go back into Unity, let that compile. And then we'll set the spawn code. So yeah, all, all the uh, data codes are saved as strings and uh, the strings are used to uh, interface with the database. So we're gonna spawn, <laughs> spawn another headquarters. We're gonna spawn a test agent and then apply and just uh, run that. I don't think we need to save it again. Scan and save again. Okay. Click host. And okay, it looks like it's an enemy unit. And one of the units was spawned. So we didn't check immovable on the object, so it thinks that it's supposed to be affected uh, by physics. Instead of just pushing other stuff out of the way, things can push the headquarters, which is kind of funny. Every time it spawns, it kind it's kind of like running away, propelling itself with the little units. So, yeah, the RC blows. All right, so we just fix a couple of things, uh, run it again, but um, that's mainly all you need to know for the video. So let's check immovable to make sure that it doesn't get pushed around by the units it spawns. And then we can give it a go. Now there's one thing to mention that might actually need to be fixed. Uh, the, the, I believe, in your controller helper. Okay, yeah, so the in your controller that this headquarters belongs to is the neutral. Um, so anything that you spawn in the scene will be spawned in the neutral uh, controller. Or yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's not arbitrary, but it is It is uh, something you have to look out for that, that should be documented. All right, well, thanks for watching and happy developing.